flat earthers. I've been watching you. I've been watching perched on the branch of a gnarled old tree, motionless, waiting for one of you to poke your head out of the long grass to boast something impossible. And then I would swoop down, talons glistening in the sun, and I would finally have me a feast. So I did that. Now I'm back at the nest ready to regurgitate it all to you, my fuck ugly hatchlings. ODD Reality made a video, Flat Earth in 5 minutes. So let's get into it, shall we? First off, HA! Fucked it at the first hurdle, dickheads! Water, when unmanipulated, is to find its level. So whether you look at a cup of water, a bathtub, a swimming pool, a lake, or the ocean, it's flat. Of course natural motion is not considered and doesn't equal a curve. Gravity pulls everything to the center, making the water appear flat on the surface to us puny humans. And you're comparing a glass of fucking water to the Earth, you idiot! Have you no sense of perspective? And just to fuck about, if you took a real close look at that glass of water, you may notice an ever so slight curve downwards. It's best seen with a much narrower glass, like a test tube. Nothing to do with the Earth being spherical, but still, fuck you! We have zero authentic pictures of the Earth and they're all composites, and NASA even admits that they photoshop Earth images. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. All that proves is NASA photoshops images of the Earth. Some are composite images, and everyone gets airbrushed nowadays anyway. And if you're implying that it's some grand conspiracy, honestly man, how could anyone benefit from that? On numerous occasions, NASA admits that we can't go beyond low Earth orbit, which is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. The interesting thing is that the moon is said to be 238,000 miles away, which is a difference of 236,800 miles. Yeah, as in we haven't been sending humans beyond that orbit recently. All we've been doing is fucking about with satellites in that orbit. Look, there's ISIS. I found them. Anyway, why would NASA say that when we've been to the fucking moon? If this were a video on trying to disprove that, then I could see why you included it. But how does this prove the Earth is flat? You even drew a spherical Earth, look! See how Europe curves around? What are you doing, mate? No matter if you're on the ground, on top of a building, a mountain, a hot air balloon, an airplane, or looking at high altitude amateur balloon footage, the horizon never fails to rise right to your eyes. What the fuck is an amateur balloon? And what's this about eye level anyway? Because eye level to me is very fucking different to the eye level of a fucking toddler. And if you're looking at something hundreds of miles away, how can you tell it's eye level anyway? That would be like someone in the US looking over to the UK to try and guess my height. Whether you are looking at Toronto's skyline from Niagara on the lake, 31 miles away, Chicago's skyline from Union Pier, 43 miles away, or even Oahu from Kauai, which is up to 108 miles away from center to center, or 73 miles away from the closest points, you will not see any curvature where it's supposed to be. According to the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, Oahu should not be visible whatsoever but you can see the whole thing. Well, that is for measuring the actual curvature of the Earth, not the curvature we can see by line of sight. Notice how in these photos you can't see the base of any of these buildings. Almost like they're obstructed by something, isn't it? We've known the Earth is round for fucking ages, mate, just by seeing ships come over the horizon, looking like they're emerging from beneath the water. That's some curvature you can see without having to live on the planet from Rick and Morty. This music is driving me fucking mental, by the way. In 1887, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted what's known as the Michelson-Morley experiment. Well, they really pushed the boat out on naming that one, didn't they? This experiment was attempting to prove the speculated motion of the Earth around the Sun. And when it failed, Albert Einstein was forced to form the theory of relativity to overcome this problem. In fact, anytime mainstream science is faced with undesirable results, they create a workaround, which isn't real science at all. The experiment failed because it was founded on some proper bullshit! Seriously, one glance at Wikipedia and it's telling me they were trying to prove the existence of the ether, which sounds like something from the Upside Down in Stranger Things. So yeah! 
that failed, and then Einstein came along and showed them how to do some real motherfucking science. That's what happened. Get your facts straight, boy. Plus, you can hardly talk about creating workarounds. Fucking flat earthers are the worst for that. Like, oh, oh, the earth is flat and gravity is shit. Yeah, well, how does the water stay on it then? Oh, uh, 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 the earth is flat, but it's got, like, these walls around it. And apparently, that's fine, but when Trump suggests a wall, it's all, let's have a fucking riot, isn't it? And I'm not reading your screen for shit. I fucking hate quotes. People think it makes them irrefutable because some prick said the same thing a hundred fucking years ago. Yeah, well, there were twats back then too. The sun is claimed to be 93 million miles away, with a radius of over 400,000 miles. Fucking it, have I been duped into looking at someone's holiday photos or something? How can he use these pictures and yet have no functioning sense of perspective? But can easily be proven to be much closer and smaller by tracing the crepuscular rays back to its origin in the sky. If the sun were indeed 93 million miles away, it would simply be impossible to have angled sun rays, as they should all consistently come in straight. Crepuscular rays are a matter of perspective again, you fucking head case. The rays are parallel but appear to get closer as they get further away, you know, more up. Here is what's happening in reality, and here is what the sun must look like in your head. According to the globular theory, a lunar eclipse occurs when the sun, earth, and moon are in a direct line. But it is on record that since about the 15th century, over 50 eclipses have occurred while both the sun and moon are visible above the horizon. F.H. Cook, The Terrestrial Plane. That's down to light from the sun refracting in the atmosphere, which is why we also get a blood moon at times, but it depends on your position on the planet when it happens. I also notice how you failed to address that a lunar eclipse, that is, when the moon passes through the shadow of our planet's fat ass, completely debunks any notion of a flat Earth. I'm just saying, if I made a video about how the Earth is flat, I would have left that part out, you know? It's a common misconception that the shadow of the Earth causes moon phases. Even the pastors and priests of the science religion readily admit this fact. That's because it's common sense, dickhead! The moon is always half illuminated by the sun. It's our perspective of it that gives us the phases of the moon. I can tell by this you do have some idea of what perspective is, so what the fuck has been going on for the first half of this video, boy? The interesting thing about moon phases is that they are always the exact same eight phases repeated. But if we were circling around the sun, these eight phases would inevitably be reversed from the summer to winter seasons. What? Why? Why would that happen? That's fucking stupid! If you were outside our solar system looking down, then maybe I could see what you meant, but you're not, mate! You've just got your head in the fucking clouds! And your diagram is fucked, right? If it's done to show the difference in position during the seasons, and we all know light comes from the sun, then what's going on here? Where's this light coming from? And what do you mean, if we're circling the sun? This is meant to be about the shape of the fucking planet! I completely understand that the idea of a flattened stationary Earth seems ridiculous in many ways. Stationary? We're stationary now! Flat and still and the sun revolves around us, we're probably the centre of the universe too, right? Because them stars have to move all on their own, don't they? In unison, too! That must have taken some rehearsing! But that's only because we are taught the false globe model from the very first time that we enter a school classroom. Yeah, it's just another way of keeping us oppressed, isn't it? All those globe makers profiting off of our ignorance. Not to mention the first time we are introduced to the concept of a flat earth. It's depicted as a highly laughable world where ships, boats, and water would run off of the edge. Are we not going to address that one then? I guess every pilot in the world is in on the secret too, are they? The Knights Templar of the Flat Earth Secret. So I do get it, but it's all part of the deception. I've spent 30 years of my life believing that we were on a spinning globe. It wasn't until I unbiasedly and scientifically investigated the Flat Earth claims that I started to realize that there is more to this theory than I originally gave it credit for. Now, after almost two years of research, I'm certain that the Earth is flat. So for 30 years, everything was fine. What went wrong, man? The wife left you, took the kids in the car, and went to live with a guy named Wolfgang, and you went, all right, fuck reality. We are told that the Earth spins at 1,040 miles per hour, while the Earth travels around the sun at 66,000 miles per hour. 
Meanwhile, the whole solar system is going inside the Milky Way galaxy at a speed of 490,000 miles per hour. And finally, the entire Milky Way galaxy is darting through infinite space at over 1 million miles per hour. Yeah, you're right, that seems really fucking unlikely. The world must be flat and stationary, with the sun revolving around us, and it's all a big conspiracy. Oh, and boats don't come over the horizon, they do actually complete the majority of their voyage underwater. It's like subspace, way quicker. Most people believe this, and yet every experiment ever conducted to prove even the simple spin of the Earth has failed. You're chatting about that Michelson Morley experiment again, aren't you? We don't need to experiment to find that out, mate. We can just look up at the fucking stars. If you are genuinely suggesting the entire universe is on the move and we are the one stationary body, I think you should sit the fuck down. The same thing goes for curvature. It's never been proven, and the only time we see it is in movies, NASA CGI, or when we're looking through a distorted fisheye lens. I fucking hate fisheye lenses, they never made a damn thing look better. Look, just ask any marksman if the earth is flat and they'll fucking put you straight. Or better yet, anyone who's seen a sunset. Or has seen something come over the horizon. Or a time lapse of the night sky. With all that said, please continue to research critically and don't be afraid to ask reasonable questions and speak out. Asking questions is good, man. That's how you learn. So you could do with asking more questions instead of offering such bullshit answers. I'll admit my responses weren't spot on. I'm sure I fucked up on a couple of things, but I'm not the one claiming such mind-fuckingly crazy shit. I guess this just goes to show Google is only as good as the person using it. If you have no sense of perspective, you have no business quarreling the secrets of the universe. Though the idea that we are as insignificant as the ant is to the boot is not something everyone can handle, and some would much prefer to believe we are the dead center of everything, and that is all for us. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, if the earth is flat, we just have to wait until puberty.